Michelle Obama's not going to run for president. They're making that announcement this morning. Will you ask, is there a woman in there that we can get her reaction? NBC just reported that Michelle Obama has said she will not run for president. Thank God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Ainsley said, I would love the reaction from from a woman in the crowd. Fox host Ainsley Earhart probably didn't expect to get an answer like this from Ms. Paula Tax here. I wouldn't vote for a woman, and especially, you know, Nikki Haley, I'm just going to say this. She's probably menopausal. We don't need that. Okay. She said, how about we vote for people regardless of their gender, just the right person for the job for America. <laughs> yeah. And uh, okay. this kind of, thanks so much, Will. Even the budget Tucker Carlson, a.k.a. Will Kane, was taken aback by the answer and did his best to try and spin Paula's answer into something his colleagues could work with. She's absolutely right. And you don't want a woman who doesn't want to be president yeah. running for president. I, that's this also is, good, too. Yeah. If this a woman doesn't want to be married life. to you, that's right. if this a is, woman doesn't know that she is Mrs. Right, this is true. you can't make her Mrs. Right. That's is right. that also? This is we true. can extrapolate all this all right. into life. You never like, want to push a yeah. woman down the aisle. If she doesn't really want to go. Right, because you see her head jerk back <laughs> as she works forward. It's very clear the Fox panel is doing everything they can to try and not tread into overt misogyny. So they shift the conversation away from the very misogynistic comment that the diner made. And they're motivated to do this because they don't want to be seen as enabling or endorsing overt misogyny. And they probably also don't want to be hit with a lawsuit, right, if they actually lean in to the explicit misogyny that we saw from the diner there. So they're trying to keep everything, make sure they're safe legally, right? I think that's another motivation. And while the Fox News panel may have been surprised by this interview and Will Kane as well, to anyone else who's been paying attention, it's really not that surprising. A woman's not going to be a good president. She's going to have no balls to scratch. She's just going to scratch her head. All a woman's good for in my book is having babies and taking care of the house and, and uh but that's, that's the old thing, you know, uh, but I'm old school. So you never even considered her? No. Beca no. Mainly because she's a woman? Because she's female. I mean, Nikki Haley's doing pretty well in this state. Do you like her? And is there anything that would uh, lose your support from Trump? Um, I do like her. Uh, some things have come up over the past couple of months that, well, the more you find out about things, the changes your mind. Like what? Um... Her, the commercials that show her saying that, you know, the immigrants are not, um, you know, criminals. They are. My parents came from another country, but they came legally, and it was hard for them. Don't come here illegally and take over our country and then try to change it to be your country. Just so we're all on the same page, this woman will not vote for Nikki Haley because she correctly doesn't believe all immigrants are criminals. Let me say that again. The woman is not going to vote for Nikki Haley because she correctly doesn't believe that all immigrants are criminals. L let that sink in for a second. Do you like any of the other Republican candidates that are out there now? I don't follow that on TV. I follow Donald Dakota Trump. Nation. So only Trump, right? Yep. President Nikki Haley. Um, we need Republican in, in the House um, if you know, she was to get in, there's a possibility that we could hopefully get some of our Republican Party to work with her. Is there going to be an election in 2024? And even if it is, will half of the population accept it? Well, because half the population didn't accept it last time, you mean? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a divided party right now, you know, so it's I I do not see I do not see peaceful elections after 2024. After 2020, you mean, or 2024? 2024. We'll be lucky if we get 2024 in. Who would you like to see if it isn't Trump is what I'm asking? You know what? Uh, uh, I think he's the best candidate. And I, the other candidates, I don't, you know. Flip a coin. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not interested. If he weren't on the ballot, uh, who, who it is that you would support for president? Oh, who would I support for president? Hmm. Most of them I probably would support. Wouldn't support? No. No. We're in borrowed time in this country right now. We need a fighter, and let's face it, whether you like him or don't like him, he's a fighter. He's a guy that, you know, continues to do what he thinks is, right, is right to save the country. We have a lot of problems right now that need to be fixed for the younger generations to have a future. The other thing that jumps out to me when watching all those videos and more is that Trump's success 
has led to the Republican Party suffering because there is so much infighting. You have a crowd of people who are for Trump and they will stand by him no matter what and get his adopt his policies and everything and do his bidding. And then you have another crowd who they don't want to have anything to do with Trump or they they tolerate him. And that, that that's not a good recipe if you are a political party trying to give back control of the White House in terms of being or having the, the president and the vice president be Republican. Um, and so and then you also have the old guard moving on because they don't want to see the end result of all this infighting. So they say, you know what? See you later. I'm good. I did my time. And yeah, honestly, I'm not sure where the Republican Party is going to be in a few years or even, uh, you know, after a year after this election. But it could look vastly different from what we're used to seeing um, for so many years or for decades, really, even though there have been a lot of awful policies and leaders who have created so much harm in our society and particularly marginalized communities. But th the level we're at now is is peak chaos and peak disruption and corruption and candidates who are trying to be like dictators. So, yeah, I don't know. I really hope the people who support Trump do not gain more access and more power, even if Trump doesn't get elected as president. The fact that he's even still has a chance to be the nominee is terrifying. But yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how, how everything's going to shake out. For LHQ, I'm Chris Williamson. We'll see you next time.